The Middle East always had a peculiar tendency to be drawn into the affairs of Western powers during world wars. The Arab revolt against the Turks during World War I, well known due to Lawrence of Arabia, is one of the most recognizable examples of this. But it certainly wasn't the end. During World War II, the Middle East once again became a battlefield. Of course, against the assurances of Lawrence of Arabia, the area was still very much in control of the British during World War II. Yet, some nations actually managed to avoid complete control. One of these was Iraq. Having secured an independence of sorts in the 1930s, Iraq was governed by Prince Abd al iyaw who was overall considered to be partial to the British, allowing them to maintain military bases and airfields on Iraqi land to guarantee access to the oil reserves of the country. Although British ground forces had largely withdrawn even before 1939, anti-British resentment within the populace and even amongst politicians was considerable, allowing former Prime Minister Rashid Ali and ranking army officers to take control of the country in March 1941. Known as the Golden Square, the coup d'etat was initially successful. Knowing that a British response was almost guaranteed, Germany was asked to assist. There wasn't much that Germany could realistically do to help Iraq. All land routes were blocked and transportation by air perilous. A logistical nightmare for a logistically inept nation. If successful, however, the Brits would be dealt a savage blow, at least in theory. With official hostilities between Iraq and the United Kingdom commencing on the 2nd of May 1941, Germany was pressed to come up with a plan and do it quickly. Eventually, after some debate, a task force was assembled. Considering the distance between the nearest friendly airfield and Baghdad, only planes with long-range capabilities could be used. Aptly titled Fliegerführer Irak, the task force was set around a staffel of B of 110s, as well as 12 Heinkel 111s and Junker transport planes. Things didn't go off to a good start as nearly all Junker planes had to be pulled from the Flyer Command to assist German forces elsewhere. Iraq wasn't that big of a priority after all. The task force trickled in incrementally from the 11th of May onwards. Painted in Iraqi colors, the planes officially became the first modern Iraqi air force. Not that the Germans would ever allow anyone but themselves to fly these machines though. There had been some losses along the way. Most severely, Major Alex von Blomberg, who shot down by overzealous Iraqi AA gunners unused to the German aircraft. With this tragedy being swiftly pushed aside, 6 B of 110s and 3 Heinz 111s raided the British airfield at Hub the surprise was total, leading to quite a number of casualties on the ground, as well as two complete plane losses for the British. In return, one Heinke 111 was hit by AA. The Germans kept up the pressure, hitting supply columns and defensive installations. Luck was on the side of the British, however, with the Germans always arriving at exactly the time when the conditions favored the adversary. This was not so for the RAF. First thing for revenge after Hapanija, hurricanes and gladiators at Blenheims attacked the German airfields at Mosul and Baghdad. In a desert war, every damage inflicted counts all the more, and the capabilities of the German task force was reduced severely. Help was on the horizon, however, as the Italians, never to be outdone, sent in 12 CR-42s. Their contribution to the cause is somewhat questionable, although one has to wonder what these planes would realistically have been able to achieve, given the situation by the end of May. The Germans for that matter were down to two single Henkel 111s that were still airworthy. With little ammo and just enough fuel to evacuate, a tactical retreat was decided upon on the 29th of May. In less than a month, the German adventure in Iraq had ended, and with it, the Iraqi Air Force ceased to exist. If you found this video entertaining and educational, make sure to share it with your friends and give me an iron cross via that like button. Or don't, that's fair enough as well. As always, I wish all of you a great day, good hunting and see you in the sky.